Yeah, so so I heard someone make a, someone made a point the other day. They was defending a kind of a, a ball or globe Earth as the reasoning and the controversy, the argument, the back and forth. Some say it's pseudoscience, a flat Earth, and they dismiss it out of hand and they hold to this ball Earth. But then they tell us, well, actually, it's not really a ball as they have made us believe it's a ball. It's more of an obloid. So we're obloid. And this only has come out and become more kind of, what we say, publicly disseminated and publicly discussed because there's been many ones and ones who've been, you know, arguing, you know, concerning the, the flat earth. Now, we have said this before to say this again. We, right, I, Ross, I, Adonis, and, you know, a few others might share this, but this is something from my own research that it's not a ball ball definitely right and it's not flat flat now some say flat flat what you mean i said the earth is a plane right both a plane as we know it in a kind of a so-called physical sense is a plane that undergirds this reality right not a planet there are planets, but planets are fine as a wandering star and we could get all into that so this one was trying to say about the equator because the earth is said to bulge. You see, this is what they say, the obloid or oblate, right? Oblate um, spheroid, right? So they say it's not really the ball ball. So now think about this for a moment. We would, most of us, unless we're deeply into it, they should be teaching and updating this in all over the place, right? So you've seen a lot of science fiction movies, sci-fi, and we, we really like sci-fi. We check out sci-fi, you know? Yeah, sci-fi show all the so-called planets and the earth as a ball and all of that, so forth. And so, yeah, because we recognize this is what we got used to. But now as we study this, he tried to make this point. This one person, I think it was Ankh, the one named Ankh. Yeah, 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 it was him. Cause I think they're having, um, um, some say a debate or a paid conversation concerning you know flat earth versus um you know ball you know ball earth yeah <laughs> yeah yeah but others have said the same thing that we heard the one they named Ankh I think it's called a god killer um, now I think he's calling himself um Bobby um Bobby Bobby something. He has this, this other name. He's called himself Bobby. Maybe that's what his name is. I'm not too sure. So far from someone, you know, um, out of the pseudo stuff, people going back to reverting back to, I guess, what their real name is or their government name. But anyway, Bro Sanchez, when I heal up Bro Sanchez, Bro Sanchez, you know, might put his name part of in this title because that debate is coming up. And so we saw um, Bobby or the one named Ankh. I think it's on one of the side the platforms. He basically say, well, that's what proves that the earth is not, you know, um, flat. <laughs> well, the earth is not a ball either. Because now they're telling us it's oblate. This oblate thing is a spheroid, according to the scientific and English technical you know, nomenclature. So it's not a ball. But people are still going to argue it's a ball. Then when you catch them on the ball philosophy, ball, ball, on the ball philosophy, they really think they're ballers, huh? <laughs> then they're gonna say, well, it's not a ball, right? That's why the earth is not flat, flat, because it bulges. They say it bulges at the equator. But now I know that Bro Sanchez, he uses, utilizes, like, based on the King James Version of the Bible, based on observation. He's one of the, I'll say, one of the best so far to really. Um, argue the point, right, based on observation, you know, based on biblical and other even ancient, you know, writings. It seems as though the ancient peoples, a lot of people don't want to acknowledge it, ones like the Kemetic, some of the Kemetics who are into that, but they, they, they imagine Ra or Ray, the sun, in a boat, in a boat, get that? In a boat, <laughs> sailing from east to west. All right, sailing from east to west. Now, people say, well, that can happen on the ball. Well, yeah, it can happen on the ball, right? But remember the horizon, I mean, the horizon. Now, they say, well, this is all just observation, what we observe. And some try to add the so-called, like, scientific racism. They say, remember the scientific racism? You know, where they try to, they, 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 this word was 
the word race comes into the English use uh, kind of late and they try to divide people based on color and skin color and the eyeball test so forth and so on but check this out before scientific racism I think that Ankh or Bobby you know is going to use that particular <laughs> you know, point as one of his points. And just to put this into perspective, so they're trying to say, well, you see how scientific racism, that's the same as a flat earth. But wait, hold on for a moment. Before scientific racism, ancient peoples did not qualify race or as modern white Anglo-Saxon Protestant, you know, or the Western Gentile, the European, the so-called white dominated world system. They're the ones that came up with this scientific racism. So, so look what they're doing. They're reversing the analogy. See, in the first case, people didn't view people just based on skin color as we do today, but more on culture, ethnicity, so forth and so on, and everything else, you know, that goes along with culture and ethnicity, all right? But then comes along, you know, and here comes, who's coming to, white man comes to dinner. Right, white man comes to Africa. White man goes around the world. White man rises up, right, from the from the late Greco-Roman times, right, coming up to modern times. And if we just put things into perspective, this whole scientific racism, right, is really no older than 400 plus years. Let's just say 500 years. See, because of it, and because of the deep traumatic psychological scars and everything, what happens is that we project it all the way into the past. So because of what we've experienced under this white Anglo-Saxon Protestant, you know, not to go even into that, even in more detail. So the point is that you cannot say, well, because of scientific racism and that pseudoscience, that's the same as the so-called flat earth. You know why? Because it appears that the flat earth, my idea, right? Behold the flat earth. This is kind of interesting. This is what we mean by it's not flat, flat, right? It's not flat, flat, because there's highlands and there's lowlands. There's highlands and there's lowlands. Now, regarding the equator, people say, well, here's how we prove that the so-called flat earth. Now, the flat earth, like I said, it's not flat, flat. We prefer to say the earth is a plane, plane, not like an airplane. We didn't say airplane, but plane, you know, like in science and geometry, a plane. And it is not a planet, a planet, right? And we say that the earth is not flat, flat, right? It's not flat, flat, but it's more towards the flat earth idea than it is to the extreme ball, ball philosophy, right? And we're not dismissing the science, what we can prove or what we can utilize scientifically. Right. And even in the argument back and forth, the thing that those pro globers basically are saying is that they can prove some things, but they can't prove other things. Then we started out talking about the ball, because when we heard him say, well, that proves that the earth is not a flat earth because what? Because it is said that the earth bulges at the equator. You think ancient people did not understand that the earth bulges at the equator? Right. That's why even in the scripture, now here's to bring in the scriptural something, the flat earth is a psyops. Well, just like the globe earth is a psy it's psychological. We all going through this in our mind, trying to figure out, well, is it really a flat earth? Is it a ball earth? Well, that makes some sense. You know, flat earth, earth make an argument, show some pictures, some other things. That makes some sense. You see how it's going down? Then others say, well, actually, that's an illusion that we're seeing with our eyes. One thing we know, is that even NASA has given us illusions that we see with our eyes, even with the whole fish lens, the, the fish, the, the, the fish eye lens, you know, that whole fish eye, you know, where, where it's like, <laughs> it's curved and everything, you know, it's curved where they put that, you know, when they're up in so-called outer space. I mean, we know that NASA has been lying. We know that they give us projections, but they flip it back on the flat earthers and say, well, some of our, some of the flat earth projections are not really accurate. All right. I'm not accurate. Can't explain this. You can't. We could take the same balls. Right. <laughs> Imagine this is the discussion people are having. They call scientists the same glow ball. Right. The glow ball. Right. Glow ball. But notice all the ancient cultures. Right. Notice all the ancient cultures. 
right? That had this, um, yeah, notice all these ancient cultures. And then you see how NASA just says, uh, 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 uh. It's like what they do with time. Same thing to do with time. Same thing to do with race. In other words, the European or the white man, white Anglo-Saxon Protestant, and from their, their education and the miseducation put out the idea formally, right, that the ancient people were so primitive, archaic, that they implied that they were stupid, they didn't know certain things, so forth and so on. I mean, look at this right here in ancient Egypt. They'll dismiss this, but it's very clear that the sky newt, Newt, right? They say Nawut, Newt, right? It's curve, right? We say that it's the heavens that's actually the globe, right? The heavens, it's a, it's a globe in a void, a void in a globe, but not a complete void, right? You know, not a complete void to say that there's nothing out there, right? But the, but the vast space, what's above this plane, Right, this plane of reality, the heavens turn around the earthly plane, and we still hold to that. We hear what the globalists say, but then can't stop thinking that they first said, right, they first said it's a ball, it's a ball, just like the ball, the globe in class, so forth. And then when the argument gets a little bit more intense, right, with the flat earthers, I think it was, who was that? It was um, uh, Tyson. You know, that scientist Tyson, you know, Neil deGrasse Tyson, who said, well, actually, it's obloid. <laughs> obloid. I was like, obloid? Some of, the, some of the people who are into, you know, the geometry, you know, ones into geometry probably, you know, caught that there. Most of the rest of us, if we don't remember geometry class, we had to kind of look that up, you know, Google that obloid. Obloid, okay, it's not actually a circle, circle, but it's sort of like an oval on the side, yeah? Hmm, isn't this interesting? But notice some of the so-called ancient models, right? Notice some of the ancient models. And these are, all these models, it's like, it's a two-dimensional model. Even we look at the globe models, right? If we were, if we were going around finding scientific or, or, uh, uh, inaccuracy. We can see inaccuracy. Already we know that the globe, that they've been talking that it's a globe. And how does the picture that we see, the first picture that NASA allegedly got back in the, what was it, the 60s or something like that, when they went allegedly up into space and they took a picture, you know, of Africa. Remember that picture of Africa they took? You know, <laughs> they took a picture of Africa. How does that look? Right? Let's say we have the picture of Africa, right? Let's uh, Let's see, we have the picture of Africa. That that first of, I think it's here it goes, right here. This is one of the first ones. I think we looked this one up and they said, this is it. This is the first picture. Notice something about this picture, right? Can you see any part of it where it bulges, as they say? So we caught them in a bold face lie because this right here is a composite. Now they admit the truth. Well, yeah, it's a composite because, you know, the earth is so big and da da da, da. They're basically admitting the same thing that some of the more astute, right, quote, flat earthers or those who are looking at it that is not being this ball. And they even have confirmed it. But you know what? That argument has fallen flat, <laughs> right? That argument has fallen flat. In other words, the ball argument has fallen flat. That means that the flat earth argument, not the extremes. I, I want to just, just say this just right up, right, straight up right here. Not the extremes. There are extremes in both camps. They're extremists. You know, when the other side is speaking, they're like, ah, I don't want to hear nothing. You know, they only want to hear their own side. All right, so I, I've tried to listen to the other side. Now, they say that the earth, it bulges at the what? At the equator. Well, see, we know that now. They, they wasn't saying that until the 21st century. I mean, not saying that in the public. Neil deGrasse Tyson and others now have come public and said, yes, the earth is not a ball ball. It's like more of an obloid. <laughs> it bulges it bulges at the equation. Where is the bulge at the equator right here? Can you show any of the pictures where it bulges at the equator? All, the, all this time since the 60s, it was giving us this ball, different version of the ball. People started to look at the ball and say, wait, wait, how come it, it seemed like this continent is bigger here, smaller there, and how could it, you know, start to 
point out inaccuracies. Now, many of the NASA defenders, they say, well, well, actually, these were composites. But then they try to turn the argument of flat earthers and say, well, look at your um, your maps. You're basically using the, um, what they call it, the, the Asmodeo, blah, 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 so forth and so on. And, you know, some of them makes a little, you know, the funniest one for for the the round earth now just because it's it's not flat flat <laughs> just because it's not flat flat right that's that's our argument it's not flat flat there are high places and there are low places so basically i'll say the earth is not is not just flat flat and it's not a ball this we can definitively say because even the globalists have had to admit from their scientific experts. So actually the ancient peoples had one view. I'm not saying we won't learn more than the ancient peoples, but how do we know that the ancient peoples was not right with some of what they saw? How do we know that the ancient peoples were not right and accurate? How do we, how do we know? Oh, because the, the 500 years Right, people say 500 years ago. Some say, well, it goes back to the time of the Greeks in ancient Egypt. Still, a lot of that still wasn't proven, but we can see that it was seemed to be a European, right, emphasis that was going against an ancient, right, idea that was shared amongst many peoples who, at the same time, while being different, did not develop any scientific racism. See, they try to flip it around and say, well, you see the scientific racism, you know, that's like the flat earth. But wait, the scene with the ancient peoples also had an idea that it was not a, a ball ball, right? Remember, see this, that right there? That's a ball. That's a globe earth. You see how it's completely a ball, right? And I say it's not a flat flat, right? They are right with the equator. You say you're right with the equator. What you mean they're right with the equator? You see, some of these models right here, you know, of course, it's a projection map right here. I mean, we recognize that. It's a projection map. Right? A projection map of the reality. Now, what is the reality? But what this also, just like the ball, ball, does not account for, at least from the observation here, it can if you, depends on how you see this. This is just a two-dimensional model. You see with a lighter area, there's a, there's a lighter area of blue. You see where there's a lighter area of light blue, like a circle? So like a circle in a circle. You see that right there? That is the high places of the earth. According to the King James translation of the Bible, that's the high place of the earth. Right? This is just to prove that even on the flat earth so-called model, right? on the flat earth so-called model based on the Bible, it's the equator, right? The equator... Right? You know what it's called the equator? They say it bulges more at the equator. You can see this in this right here. It bulges more. So this is not a, a ball ball. It's not the kind of ball you'll play baseball, basketball, anything. It's, it's an off ball. Right? It's an off-shaped ball. Right? So that proves that this that they've been shopping to us and giving to us is a lie. This, this ball ball. And they haven't updated. The globalists have not updated their models either. Okay, that's on another subject matter that we was reasoning on. So you can see right here, this is one. That's the circle. You see the circle right there? Well, actually the globe in their projection. But then you see they say so the equator, it bulges. But this idea of it bulging at the equator, how long was this known? And how come they didn't update it? They still shopped this ball ball to the public. So even the globalists were if not overtly deceiving the public, they were not revealing to the public that their first conceptions were not right until the flat earth argument kind of comes up, right? And then they say, well, actually, it looks like this, right? It looks like the obloid. It looks like that. Wow. So you see how, how at, the, at, the, at the radius, you know, or at the equator, you know, it bulges out. This here is explained by this. Now, both models, if you just have a, 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 a basic conversation, so to speak, both models, right, you know, at least on this particular point, right, according to what they now show us, that it's not a ball ball, but an obloid. Okay, 
but then they still have in the classrooms and all over the place. And NASA has taken pictures that they say this is Earth from out of space and other so-called Gentile nation space agencies. And they show us pictures of Earth that looks like this ball here and we see no bulging. They said, well, it bulges slightly. This doesn't seem like slightly. Look at the two. The two definitely seem different. When have you seen a picture from outer space like that? You, see, you, you, you know what I'm saying? You know, you, you get this point? This is not a new, this is a new point for the public. But now they try to take this new point, the globalists, and say, see, we proved that it's not flat, flat based on the models. All right? That's why I showed you the other one where I said, look at the light blue area. Right, you see the light blue area? The light blue area. So here is where the biblical verse, and give this biblical verse, get in and out, right? Get in and out. High place of the earth. He made him to ride on the high places of the earth. That's the the high places of the earth. Where are the high places? Some interpret the high places like the mountains, the highlands. There are highlands, right? The highlands are the highlands in the more equatorial regions of the earth we find the highlands there let's go back to to one of those earth models over here let's go back there let's let's go right here here we go right let's go where they have countries right well we can't see notice right there right in that equatorial region wouldn't the the area they call like egypt and the levant you know, in like parts of North, like Africa, you know, like Egypt, Ethiopia, Israel. Isn't that right in that same area, the high places of the earth? Right. Remember, we're, we're using the Bible here as a point of reference. Right. He made him ride on the high place of the earth you know, that he may eat the increase of the fields and so forth. So on. The high places, you know, the equatorial regions right and then over here um you know what it says and while he had not yet made the earth nor the fields nor the highest part of the dust of the world here is the the feminine the mother kind of wisdom speaking about what the almighty did from the hebrew perspective right so people say well where's the she you know where's that mother you know, according to the Bible, what's well, right here, you know, in Proverbs, right? Wisdom, Hakma is explained. Like most ancient peoples had similar conceptions. They did not have this idea of race just based on eyeballing a person, right? They looked at culture and ethnicity. You see? See, it's a European white man that tried to sum all y'all y'all are black. And 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 some of us are white. And all those people are, are Oriental. You know what I mean? He, he, he's the one who came up with these terms that now have been shot down as being scientifically inaccurate. But then he also changed the ancient, more earthly plane conception of the Earth into the planet. So our argument is that the Earth is a plane, not a planet, and it's not flat, flat. But the flat Earth, the rational flat Earth arguments make more sense my, then the majority of globalists. Globalists are just going along for other globalists. It's like they've been made to believe that and a lot of them can't think around it. For example, the point I made about the earth that they gave us being a ball and then only after the flat earth argument became so mainstream that some of the scientists basically started to crack and say like Neil deGrasse Tyson, oh, well, it's not a ball, it's not a globe, it's more like a obloid. Wow, that, that was a good point. It was a very good point that, that he said those things. You can see over here where it says, I will cause him to ride on the high places, the high place of the earth, the equatorial regions, right? The equatorial regions for lo, he that formeth the mountains and createth the wind and declareth to man what is his thought that maketh the morning darkness and treadeth upon the what? The high places of the earth, the equatorial regions, Right now, I hope ones and ones can bring that out in some of the models. Now, we're not completely happy. That's why if you, you know, if you see us go through our folder, we got like dozens of different, we'd be searching out, you know, globe and the flat earth models. 
You know, we give equal opportunity to both reasonments. Some of them, they be going into a lot of ad hominem attacks. Oh, those people are stupid. Yeah, whether it's the flat earthers or it's the globalists, it's like, okay, you're going to get into all that name calling. I want to hear the argument, the reasoning, the science, the explanation. You know, I don't really need the, the name calling. Oh, if you believe the flat earth, you stupid. You know, that just showed me that the person can't make the argument or vice versa. Right, Yahuwah Elohim is about Ot is his name, Shemo. Here, Micah, it says the same thing, right? To the, to the high places. The high places, the Bama, Bama, high places. Now, often they would say the high places is like cult, you know, cultic places where people would offer offerings on mountaintops or whatever. But you can clearly see that that's not the meaning of the word. That's one of the applications of the word. It's from an unused root meaning to be high. The highlands, the highlands. So there are highlands and there are lowlands, then how could the earth be flat, flat? Now, the reality of the horizon, the horizon, you know, that horizon is an interesting, if it's an illusion, it's a very interesting illusion. Oh, we can see it. The ancients saw it. But you know what we don't really see for ourselves? What the earth really looks like. They show us pictures and the pictures keep changing. Then they tell us, oh, it's a CGIF because it's so big. And, the, you know, we have to take these composite and the computer generated CGI. And that doesn't take away from the globe idea. But notice the globe and the globalists, the, those who defend the globe, they have had to, in defending themselves against the flat earth, they've revealed errors from themselves in what they were making people believe. The whole thing about the globe and the obloid. People throw that in there, but then they still argue that it's a, that, that, that it's a ball, right? Well, you can't argue it's a ball and then it's the obloid. Is it an obloid or is it a ball? And because they had to even do that, thank you, Neil deGrasse Tyson, it backs up at least our argument that the earth is not flat, flat. The earth is a plane and not a planet. And now with the obloid argument, this not even proves our conception of the earthly plane and the high places of the earth, which are more the equatorial regions where they would tell you in their model that it bulges. <laughs> but how come we don't see no picture, CGI picture of the earth bulging? They always show us balls, right? They always show, <laughs> they always show us balls and elevation. Right? That's why the earth cannot be flat, flat. We get the argument because it's their simple argument. Sometimes, since they want to stop calling it a globe, but it's a really obloid, it's not a ball, but an obloid, right? I think we need to do some updating. You know, for the so called, the earth is a plane, not a planet. What about that argument right there? And the high places, the high places, the equator, the equatorial regions. Right. Where others will say the earth, they say we think of the earth as a sphere. No, you make people believe the earth is a globe. But in actuality, it is a spheroid slightly larger or bulging in radius at the equator than at the pole. So why when we're looking at space, so-called NASA, so-called satellite, so-called pictures, we don't see it bulge. Watch. If this argument becomes more of an argument, they're going to be like, oh, new new picture from outer space. They show you the earth bulging. <laughs> Notice how they are responding to the argument. That means that they don't they didn't have the argument all right and exact to begin with. But the problem is that they can't admit that. Right. You know, they can't admit that. So right here, 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 just a little bit on this particular reason, man. And the flat earth models do need to get better. But then again, the globe models are not perfect in and of themselves. So notice, let's continue to have this discussion. All right. So anyway, um, scientific racism and the globe both belongs in the same category. And this is not to endorse every so-called flat earth argument. Right, because a lot of the flat earth arguments we don't. A lot of them is some extreme stuff. Like you know, when I say extreme stuff, it's not well. You know, like we said, Brother Sanchez, look up Bro Sanchez. I think he's one of the best, you know, articulators, you know, of it based on the evidence, you know, both the 
evidence that that is available to ones like us you know what i mean in the public not you know nasa has stuff they say in outer space so they must see some other stuff but they don't really all they show is the cgif you know what i mean they only show us the actual picture somebody take a cell phone and go out into outer space and and turn around the people that sent up the the balloons you know what i mean give us a very good perspective of it and then they they try to argue against that and say oh that's that's not accurate this is how it looks and they're using the same fish eye lens you know what i mean so what are we people to think right we're supposed to think for ourselves you know and, and and it's good it's good it's good it's so good you know if a man can think for himself and before we get out of here you know word of our sponsor godfather and king of kings right here Let's look at this right here. It says right here that the, these young people face a world beset with the most effectively organized program of deceptive propaganda and of thinly screened operations ever known. Right? In other words, the youths and people of the earth, you know, especially in this present time. Right? Let's learn to think for ourselves, you know, but at the same time, let's follow the evidence and get off of some of the ad hominem you know, the personal attacks. Even if somebody believes in the globe and you believe in the flat earth, don't have to get into the personal attack. That means that somewhere along the line, you're, keeping, you're taking your eye off of... <laughs> taking your eye off the ball. <laughs> right? You know, when the facts fall flat, when they, when they favor more the so-called flat earth argument. Although, like we said, you know, the earth is not flat, flat, right? It's actually a psyops on both sides. You know, behold the flat earth. 